Thanks for joining us here on 10 Tampa Bay Plus. And yes, first things first, uh, we know you're storm weary here and we feel it too. We feel it every bit. So our weather team's here with Colleen Campbell in the house, uh, Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins checking in as well, and uh, Amanda Pappas, of course. Uh, as we look at the big picture, here's what our weather team's doing. First of all, we're putting you first, your family first. We appreciate your trust. And we're looking at the latest and the new information here on this Sunday uh, afternoon is, well, we've got a hurricane, officially Hurricane Milton in the tropics. The one thing to pick out here, we got a category one with 80 mile per hour winds. The pressure's falling, indicating a strengthening, stronger storm system. And the track is important. Now it hasn't changed too much over the last day. Okay, so you see a category three, uh, the track and intensity is important, right? So we've got a major hurricane likely developing in the southern Gulf of Mexico right here as it starts to make a move off to the east and east northeast. And notice as it approaches the western Florida coastline, still expected to make a landfall, it looks like by Wednesday. And based on the latest from the Hurricane Center, still could be a major hurricane. So that's not set in stone yet, but that's meaning that today, that's why we've been saying finish those preparations, go over your family storm plan. That's the big thing. No evacuations or watches or warnings have been issued yet, but I think that will change as we head into our Sunday evening. So our weather team's here with you every step of the way. And for now, watching a major hurricane heading toward the western Florida coastline. The question is where? So this track, you see a big divergence in tracks. We've got South Florida all the way to Central and North Florida at this point. So it's a storm for all of us here to watch in Florida. So we've got a weather impact alert through Thursday, and it looks like the main impacts from Milton would be late Tuesday night, Wednesday's the day, and Wednesday night. So storm surge, flash floods, damage you win, really all of the hazards we expect uh, with a major hurricane, uh, like we saw with Helene. We're hoping based on the latest that that storm surge, if it moves a little farther south, would be on the lower end, okay? Yeah, Tampa, we need a break from that surge, for, of course, and we'll keep you updated on that. We need to protect our exposed areas. There's a lot of debris around town. We've got to gather as much of it up as we can because we don't want that to go flying around when these winds hit, especially on Wednesday. And again, no evacuations yet, but we're going to pay attention to those, right? As we found out in Helene, we're going to heed all evacuation warnings with this system. So two trains of thought in the tropics. This is our spaghetti models. I mean, we've got dozens and dozens of models running uh, these right here. And you can see uh, we've got a southern track. OK, more toward Fort Myers and South Florida and a northern track more toward Tampa and I-4 corridor and even northeast Florida in one of those tracks. So what we're going to see here and what I'm looking at is it's going to be crucial over the next 12 to 24 hours to see exactly where uh, Milton really winds up. OK, so we've got that one track, number one, that dominant track that I've been favoring. And then there's track number two that we want to stay away from, right, because more of us will see bigger impacts the farther north it goes. But the trends are friends so far today. Most of the day, uh, I've been feeling a little more optimistic. We've seen a, a hurricane now, Milton, just kind of meandering in the southwest Gulf. And that's good because as we look to the north, we've got a front. We've got increasing wind shear. So it's almost like a race. Front to the north, storm developing to the south. And if this can take its time, the, the thing is, the thinking is that front, okay, would push far enough south where we'd keep the track farther south. So fewer of us in Florida would see those major impacts. So uh, the cold front I was talking about uh, continues to move uh, from north to south. Okay, and as we look at the timing, let me step out of the way. Here's Tuesday into Wednesday. Notice the front making more headway into the I-10 corridor. And at the same time, Milton is actually still off to the southwest. So some good news there. Uh, it would be that this front, if it continues to win the battle, would push Milton a little farther south. So as we look at the winds, the worst of the winds coming in Wednesday as we wake up and through the day Wednesday, that's key. And again, some of those wind speeds, yes, definitely tropical storm force or more. And you can see Tampa at 56% chance of that, Fort Myers at 71. And these percentages will continue to go up. As far as local impacts, very early, but just an idea, an indication of what we have to do, why we're all preparing today on Sunday, just in case, right? So I showed you those two tracks. Even if it takes that far southern track, yeah, we've got the local impacts of 50 to 70 mile per hour winds for Hernando, Pasco, Citrus County, looking at Brooksville and Hudson. Uh, rain of three to six inches. Surge to be determined based on how far north or south that track goes, right? Uh, so less of a surge if it goes much farther to the south. All right, and we're going to go over that storm plan. As far as we go down toward Tarpon Springs, I know we're still cleaning up the trees. Carrollwood, Tampa, Hillsborough County. As we look at uh, Pinellas County, Brandon and Fishhawk, winds easily 60 to 80 miles per hour. That's why I'm worried about all that debris blowing around the area, okay? Rain of four to eight inches, 
search to be determined. Know your zone. And if you look at the winds, okay, the wind would still be late Tuesday night, Wednesday at about 4 a.m. till very late Wednesday night or Thursday at 2 a.m. And our weather team will continue to fine tune this, but notice Manatee and Sarasota. I've got you a little higher impacts here, maybe a little higher surge because of the track. But again, the track is still fluctuating north and south. So we'll continue to update that surge and what it will be. Inland areas, well, as we know, inland areas can see just as big of an impact as coastal areas at times, if not more. OK, so uh, keep your guard up. DeSoto, Highlands County, Lake Wales, Avon Park have that plan OK, in place. Lakeland, you've got winds over 60 miles per hour, rain of 6 to 10 inches, and there's that flooding. And we'll continue to go over the plan. Seven day forecast. Here we go. We're talking about a weather impact alert all the way through the first part of Thursday with the main impacts from Milton again coming in very late Tuesday night during the day Wednesday into very early Thursday. And of course, we'll continue to keep you updated here on 10 Tampa Bay Plus. Keep streaming and we'll continue to feed you the latest information to keep you and your family informed, prepared and connected.